Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer after the campaign video. This is at least our second or third. And what we do in the after campaign video is we basically will show off the different games that we have gotten after uh, they have been reviewed from the prototype stage, which is mainly what you see on my channel is prototype games uh, when you're looking at our Kickstarter playlist. So these are basically all games that have been Kickstarted and are now in their final production form. They're either currently being shipped to their uh, the backers or they already have receive them. Some of them are newer than others, but all of them have been within the last month or so. Uh, we have Elements by Bad Cat Games. This is Wanted Earth. Oh, I can't, I can't. What? There's, 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 there's no name. Uh, no, there it is. There it is. Shadow Squirrel Games. We have Tournament of Towers. This is Iron Hippo Games. Uh, this one over here is called Heirs of the Wizard King, and it is by Closet Full of Games. And then we have Aegis uh, by Zephyr Workshop. This was probably our one of our original reviewed games. Um, so we're gonna be talking a lot about these five games specifically here. We're going to be going uh, back and forth uh, between all the different components. I'll tell you what the uh, prototype components used to look like and I'll tell you and then I'll show you what these components look like and then after we do all that we're going to come up and then we're going to discuss each and every one of the games individually about their improvements and the qualities they made uh, things they could have maybe done differently things that they chose to do that was unique or useful that kind of stuff and uh, after that we will uh, hopefully have another one of these videos maybe in a month or so to show you some more games but uh, these are all games that have come out if you haven't checked these guys out these are all really fun games I've enjoyed every single one of them and that's why I'm very happy that we were sent a production copy to show you the final variant if you have not seen it thus far. All right, let's go down and I will show you each of these games and explain a little bit about them. All right, so let's go ahead and get into all five games and we'll just go ahead and start with Elements by Bad Cat Games. This is Elements, it's by Jason McLean Jones and uh, you're trying to become the Master Z. This game is similar in ways to the game Yahtzee and how you're gonna be rolling the dice as well as Dice Throne. Every player is going to be getting one of these nice, uh, nice and thick player boards here. There is two rule books, one in uh, French and one in, in English, as well as a uh, designed bag that's gonna hold different uh, chits. These are all thick wooden chits, really nice. Uh, you're gonna have these big thick dice as well included in the game. Uh, one problem I had with the prototype with the die is the white ones you can barely see when you rolled them. That is not the case for this game at all. You can easily see all the different uh, colors and it's nice how they added a black to the white background theme. The rest of them are white, but as you're rolling these dice, they feel really nice. They're really well designed and they are all etched, which is really cool. And I like that aspect of it. You can tell they spent some time to make sure that these dice were going to look nice. And in fact, they do. So uh, these are the, probably the most important aspect of a die game is to have nice die that feel good in your hands. Uh, what else do we got in here? Let's go ahead and look. We're also going to get these extra uh, elements, uh, player boards, I guess you would call them. There are the shaman boards as well, and these are also nice and thick. And then finally, you're going to be getting these uh, as well, these tiles, uh, which can be used as well throughout the game. These are nice too. So uh, let's talk about the components. Well, first of all, the boards are really well done, and they have a front and a back side, which actually is different depending on the type of game mode you are playing. All the different characters are really well done. You have the artwork attached to them. They did make some changes on the artwork, and I can't remember exactly how it looked before, but uh, overall the player boards are nice, easy to understand. You have your shields, your healing, your special abilities, your wild surges, your water Water surge and of course your free strikes you can use and uh, yeah, everything here is pretty well done I mean it's exceptionally thick which is what I like about these kind of games with your player boards so overall this was a really well done game and they did really put some time and effort into making sure all the components were gonna be nice and thick practical easy to use especially for a die rolling game because it's probably the most important thing when it comes to die rolling games so elements if you're interested in taking a look at our review you can do that I'm just going to slide everything in here as quickly as possible so I can move on to the next one. But uh, this is a really well done prototype. There's not a lot I can say negative about it if you enjoy the artwork and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they did a really good job at putting this together. It doesn't fit right now because I didn't put it in, put it back together that way, uh, very, very well because I'm on a time limit here. Uh, Heirs of the Wizard King is the next one. This is full, Closet Full of Games. This one here was a lot bigger than I expected it to be. I thought this was going to be in a small box. It is not, as you can see in my hand. Uh, I'm six foot two, so it's a I have a rather large hand. Uh, this is a rather nice box. Uh, 
and you're gonna have player boards here. These are also extremely thick. I was not expecting these player boards to be as thick as they are. It, it's actually quite difficult to bend them, so that's how nice and thick they are. And they have a front and a back, which does have different differences based on these numbers here uh, for the different game modes. It's also gonna get this uh, Wizard King. It comes with it as well. You're going to get a big stack of cards here, and another stack of cards over here. And then you're also going to get a bunch of custom tokens. And these custom tokens are uh, actually rather, like, it feels like they're a little hollow inside, but that doesn't bother me at all. They're nice, they're vibrant, they're beautiful, uh, and they all are based off of your uh, cards, your cards uh, that you're going to be utilizing in the game. There's your abilities here, and all the different tokens that go go with them in some way. Uh, this is a rather fun game as well. I have it reviewed. You can go ahead and check it out. Uh, but as far as the quality of the components go, the nice insert in the box, the thickness of the box, everything was really well done with this game. Very impressed as well with Heirs of the Wizard King. I am uh, very happy to have this one in my collection. It, they did a really good job on it on the front and on the back. They didn't put a lot of stuff on it because they wanted to make sure that it uh, it, it basically just told you what you needed to know and had that beautiful artwork. So, Heirs of the Wizard King by Closet Full of Games. All right, now we're moving on to Aegis, the combining robot strategy game. This one here is by Zephyr Workshop. And uh, when we got this game about a year ago, eh, we got probably like 30 or 40 robots. Uh, they have these player boards here, but they didn't have nearly as many. Uh, they get they this rule book here. Gosh, there's a ton of stuff in here. This is basically like uh, Gundam and... Uh, Transformers kind of all combined. Uh, you're going to be getting a big, huge player board here, uh, which you'll be able to utilize for tactics. And of course, there's the back end where you can kind of customize it. And it actually includes a bunch of customizable terrain, which was very shocking and very nice. I like how they went and put the entire kitchen sink into this game. They, they made sure you had everything. So you can customize the entire board how you want. It comes with uh, the custom die. Uh, they are not imprint. They're not uh, etched. They're imprinted, which is you know it's okay. But uh, with what you're getting in the game, uh, which is just spectacular, I don't think you'll even notice that much. It won't even make that much of a difference because of all the value you get in here. Let me show you what else you're gonna get as well. So you're going to be getting there's the expansion sets which are all these. These are all robots, every single one of these cards, and they actually have you the extra player cards here. Uh, these are all the different robots. They actually have, some of them it will combine into other robots, and they have stories on them, all the different characters, the generals and whatnot. Very, very cool. A lot of stuff in this game. These are the extra expansion packs as well. So you're going to be getting a lot of robots, and I'll go ahead and show you them as well, show you what's in this box. And these are all a bunch of standees and some other tokens too. They all go with the different robots. But I went ahead and organized all these robots by type. And then you're going to put them in these little inserts here, which is excellent. Really, really cool. Well done. All of these robots, there you see all of them. They're, they're all organized and easy to get to. And uh, they're combining style robot game. It's cool. All of these are tokens that are in here. These are like attacks and you have the accuracies and whatnot. Scrap tokens. So everything's easily put in here. And uh, yeah, you get a bunch. Here's even more, even more robots. Like there's just a ridiculous amount of content in here. Now, uh, they are all cardboard standees for you miniature lovers out there. It's not gonna be uh, maybe the game for you if you don't like miniatures, but for all you tactics lovers, this is one of the most customizable tactics game I have ever seen as far as how you can customize the board and the teams you can customize. Like realistic, like think about how many different teams and all the combinations you can make with all of these cards. There's there's tons and they're big and they're they're super cool. So oh, it has a first player token as well, it's pretty cool. But nevertheless, a lot of stuff going on with Aegis. If that's something you're interested in taking a look at, do go ahead and check it out. It comes with so much stuff. And uh, these are a little thin, I suppose, but like I said, you're getting your bang for your buck with this one. All right, moving on to the next game is Wanted Earth. This is by the Squirrels, right? The Shadow Squirrel games. Uh, this was one of the original tactical miniature games I got a while ago. And uh, it's going to come with a rule book. It's going to come with a player board, which also is uh, customizable, as well as the base board of the game. Let's see if I can pull this baby out. 
bam, a lot of stuff going on there. So you have this side, and then you can turn it around, and there's a blank side to the board. Uh, it also is going to come with uh, comics, and I got mine signed, as well as some additional cards here that represent the monsters in the game, or the aliens, and all the different weapons you can utilize. I kind of wish they would have added more flavor text on some of these items, because because quite a few of them are kind of blank. And it always feels weird to me when certain things are blank. Like this one is fine because it has all the components that, or has all the symbols there. And I know that this one equates to no range or no no die or whatever. But it's just weird when it's not there. So I would like to have seen like some kind of flavor text or something. The cards are good quality. The board is really nice quality, and the box is nice and thick. It also comes with miniatures, and they're rather nice miniatures. They're thick, and they look like they're uh, some kind of mold. And uh, they have this, like, it's like a sh silvery, shiny type plastic. Uh, it comes with the boss boards in the game. Character boards here. And there's quite a few characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine characters, all in total as well as two bosses. You're also going to be getting a bunch of die, a bunch of other tokens and whatnot. You'll be utilizing the cubes to track your movement and your health. Uh, you're also going to be using the die. There's different colored die to do different amounts of damage. And then you have these two die, which indicate the X and Y axis. Uh, here's some even more tokens. And then inside here are a bunch of characters. There's all the different characters in the game, and it comes with some blue uh, stands that you can attach the... Uh, heroes too, which we'll be utilizing in the game. And like I said, you get a ton of miniatures. There's just a ton of them going on here, as well as the uh, locations where you can have enemies spawn. And uh, also in this game is going to come included is like just like Aegis in a tactical game, making your own map. You'll have these pieces to utilize to make your own map. However, the board's super big. It's weird to me that it doesn't come with a a lot of, I mean, maybe this is enough pieces. I don't know. I'm just, maybe I'm just spoiled with how many Aegis had, but these are all the pieces it comes with pretty much. I think there's about uh, two, four, six, eight, twelve or so. So you'll be able to customize your own board as well, though. I suppose if you wanted to, you could kind of customize your own homegrown ones if you really wanted even more. But it comes with quite a bit of stuff, and it all fits back in the box rather nicely. You can fit all the miniatures in there. And all the miniatures, were, as they're probably not as detailed as maybe something like Simon, they are really uh, thick and sturdy, and, and, they're, and they are rather nice as well. So they're saying that. If this is something that you're interested in, uh, the original prototype had the sliders that slow up, slid up and down this track here. I personally like that better, but my cameraman doesn't. He actually prefers the cubes moving around. And if that's the case, if I wanted cubes, I probably want these to be thicker player boards and actually have inserts into them. So when I put the cubes in there, they're less likely to fall off or fall out. So I'd prefer thicker player boards in that case. Otherwise I would like these sliders. I know that they can kind of mess up the cards like Betrayal and the House on the Hill does, but that's just probably a preference for me. Um, and the dice are rather well done. They're just, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they are custom. They just have little, little slashes on them. Yeah, they're fine. So that is Wanted Earth. It comes with quite a few things, like I said, and a bunch of good cards that you can use for, uh, the fighting. You got your, have, you know, have your, uh, weapons and whatnot. I did go ahead and look at the comic book, and the comic books are pretty cool. They have little origin stories for the two different characters that are in the game. So if that is of interest to you, go ahead and check it out. Wanted Earth. Let's see if I can put this together. Uh, I did a pretty good job. And it fits right back in the box pretty quick. Our final one now, final one. Now we're going through it here. This one here is Tournament of Towers. Um, this is going to be a game I got a while ago, which is a standing slash stacking game. I'll show you the back of the box. Has all that stuff going on. It shows you what you're basically doing in the game. It's two to four players. Uh, when I got this box, it was definitely not as thick and sturdy. High quality. It's nice. I like it. It feels thick. Feels good. It's got some nice artwork in the on the inside as well. And okay, let me show you what this has going for you. This is a heavy, heavy box. It has a lot of stuff. Um, I'd be nervous about things falling out of it because it's so heavy, but I don't know if I'd knock it off points because I, I like the fact that it gives you so much in here. There's quite a few things it gives you. Here are all the components in the game. 
and they all fit just snug like a bug. It's going to be difficult to put all this back, but it's going to come with a stack of cards, these blocks here. It's going to come with these yellow pieces here, as well as these little characters, and they're all much thicker. They, they feel like actual like uh, thick molds as opposed to the 3D prints we had last time. Like the other ones we had last time was stuff my 3D printer could actually print itself. But these are much nicer, much thicker. Uh, they have a little more weight to them and they just feel good all around. This is a stacking game in which you're going to be stacking the uh, different pieces together. You can stack them any way you want. You'll start with one of these guys here. And you're going to be trying to do your best to, to stack all the pieces you get that you're going to be drafting from this card deck here. And uh, it can get rather insane. You don't want your pieces to fall off, obviously. But uh, they did a pretty good job. It's it's nice. It's thick. The, the you know, the insert's okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here, which is... It's hard to say that that's a gripe, you know, but it, it it's going to be tough to put it back and I'm nervous. I've, I've been nervous with this one that it's going to have a bunch of pieces fly out. It hasn't yet. So that's a good thing. But uh, these yellow pieces are cool too. But overall, the components, quality, all this is really, really solid. I really enjoyed this game. It is my favorite stacking game thus far. Uh, and I have quite a few stacking games, including Rhino Hero. So this one's even better than that, in my opinion. And it comes with some scorecards and whatnot. As you can see, even before I got out of the box, it, this popped off the back of this. But it, that's whatever, I suppose. Um, quality is pretty good there. And uh, the box came out really well. I am excited to play this game. I'll probably play this live at some point. So that is all five games. Elements, Wizards, uh, Heirs of the Wizard King, Wanted Earth, Aegis, and then Term of Towers. All right, let's come back up and we'll talk about a little bit about each of these games. And we will uh, inform you about what might be coming up next time. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about all five games in, in order uh, based on what I thought the most positive aspects were and what I'd like to see as improvements. So we have Aegis here, and this game basically threw in all the bells and whistles. It has a ton of stuff. Um, as for tactical miniature games, I prefer miniatures, but because it came with so many of these standees and so many customizable different options, I think it'd almost be impossible to put miniatures in here. Um, Overall, it's really solid and it comes with a ton of stuff. It's really cool. I like that aspect of it. I can't really think of a lot of negatives as far as uh, it being what it is. And I'm not going to dock any points for having standees. Like I said, all uh, the artwork is really cool. And uh, the ability to create your own board is, is, is great. I think the one thing I'd probably say is I probably would like rather have these player boards a little thicker. But like I said, it's, it's so hard to be picking on a game that gives you so much value for, for what's in the box and what the price point is. Uh, Wanted Earth, this one has uh, done an excellent job as well, putting itself together. The miniatures are a lot thicker, a lot stronger. The original pieces I had when I was playing the prototype broke and they came apart because, you know, the type of miniatures, molds and whatnot, um, resin comparatively to this stuff here, is going to be a lot better quality. The player boards I'd like to feel, see a little thicker and I'd rather see cubes uh, in a thicker player board with little indentions or I'd like to see a sliding uh, piece going up and down because then I could easily keep track of my stuff without it falling off. Uh, the comic books was a nice touch. The cards were a nice touch. I'd like to see the cards have more flavor text on them. No empty space on cards. I don't like empty space on cards. And the additional map on the back giving you the customization to make your own map is really cool. And Aegis and Wanted Earth are very different games. They are tactical games, but one is more of a Final Fantasy tactic style game, which is Aegis. And Wanted Earth is more of a one-on-one -on -one or team-on-team, -team, uh, back-and-forth action management uh, game that involves cards and involves... It, it feels more like a fighter type of game. Uh, shooter type of game as well. But uh, anyway, those are what I'd prefer to see on that. But overall, it did a really good job. Uh, all these games really did a, did a decent job as to uh, creating content. The Elements did a great job as far as thickness goes. All the components are rather thick. Uh, I mean overly thick actually that I thought they would be which is a good thing because that means the quality is going to last a lot longer the box has got a little bit of, I don't know for some reason it feels like it's got a lot going on uh, a, lot of, a lot of words it has uh, both rules in English and French which is pretty cool and I guess that basically be for the market it was in 
All the dye are really well done. The original complaint I had about this game was you couldn't see the white dye. They're virtually unusable. And they went ahead and fixed that one issue I had, and it's much better now. It's a good dice rolling Yahtzee uh, battle game that you can play up to four players. So good job on you guys, Bad Cat Games. Then we have Heirs of the Wizard King. I was not expecting this to come in this box along with all the extra meeples and, and wooden pieces. They did a phenomenal job for what this was. Uh, I was expecting this to be. I thought this game was going to be more along the lines of like something like a small box game like Valfurion, uh, but it came out to be much larger and come with nice thick cards and nice thick uh, player mats. So it did a really good job. Even the box itself is sturdy and tells you exactly what you need to know. There's not a lot of stuff going on, but it has all the information you're going to need right there on the side. So good job, uh, closet full of games. Okay, uh, Tournament of Towers. This one here, uh, this one here was excellent. Other than just the pieces, I knew they were going to need to be reprinted or re reshaped and molded and whatnot, and that was what the campaign was going to be do doing. And uh, I really was very, very sad when the, when the uh, box was sent away from my home because I couldn't play it anymore. And I'm very happy to get this box back. All of the miniatures and all of the different pieces are nice quality and are cool. I mean, they do lose out on a little bit of the the weightiness of some of the pieces, like the spring is a lot tighter than the other spring was, which was a lot like flimsier, uh, which I don't know how that's gonna play in the game, but as far as the quality goes, really nice. Uh, the could have used maybe an insert, but I, I can see how expensive those can be. The insert here does the job that it needs to, and uh, it comes with a bunch of stuff. This thing is packed and it is heavy, which would make me a little nervous as to if I let it go, you know, at one point, or if dropped it, everything is gonna fly out, and whether or not it's gonna be easy to put back into the box after you're done playing with it is another thing as well. But nevertheless, another really well done game has everything you need to know on it as well. It's very clean and classy on the front. There's not a lot of written stuff. There's not even the designer's name on the front of the box, just Iron Hippo on the very bottom, which is pretty solid. Um, and I don't see a player count on the sides. It's just in the back here, so that works as well. So anyway, those are the five games I wanted to talk to you about as far as the after the campaign goes. I have three or four more coming that should be really rather interesting for you guys to see that are really well done. And uh, I look forward to showing you guys the next five games that have been uh, back on the tabletop after a long Kickstarter campaign and uh, how these guys turn out. I think if you're interested in this, let me know and I'll start doing more videos like this. I do get quite a few games in that are after the campaign as a, you know, here, thank you for reviewing the game. Here's a copy of it. And I like, I like to show these games off because I think that they're, it's important to know how companies or how publishers uh, go from their basic copies or prototypes into their more higher quality or higher class productions. And so you can go, oh, I see the prototype on Unfiltered Gamer. Uh, but this company, I've seen their last game and it was exactly like the prototype when it was produced. Maybe that's not for me. Or wow, they did such a great job in uh, adding to it. Like, like Heirs of the Wizard King, like very, very uh, over the top, which was nice. Not over the top, but just where it needed to be as opposed to just the bare uh, essentials. So uh, that is the kind of thing I think is interesting for people to see, especially if you're interested in a lot of Kickstarter campaigns. All right, guys, I know this has been a long video, so I'll let you go. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time on the Tabletop.